About this time of year, a lot of boats show up in the Broad River, and they're after one of the most exciting fish that occurs anywhere, and that's the cobia. Our deep saline waters are an ideal place for cobia to spawn. So we are going to take an adventure today with Captain Christopher Matson, Matson Charter Services, and Chris is going to take us on an adventure to catch a cobia. We're going to try it, Tony. So how are we going to do this, Chris? What, well, what are Tony, we going to do? Well, Tony, you know, we just got set up. We've got our, our anchor down. We've got the chum bag on the bottom. We've got our rods out. Um, sooner we're going to start trying to catch a little bit more bait, try to catch some greenies or whatever else might be around. There's a small strip of live bottom, and uh, that's, that's pretty much the only live bottom that we have here is these little breaks from the current. And that's where these fish will migrate. Well, this is really exciting. I mean, Kobe are neat fish, and I hope we get a chance to see one. Absolutely, me too. I'm using something called a sabiki rig, and we're trying to catch what are called greenies, threadfin herring, and they're down in deep water like this, and they're excellent bait for cobia. So what I'm doing is just kind of jigging this sabiki rig off the bottom and seeing if I can get something. This can be a really, really productive way to catch bait. Yep. Looks like three on this one. Excellent. And maybe these will catch a cobia for us. All right, we got something. He's going under the boat. I it looked came up the surface. It looked like it might have been a cobia, but it, I'm. <laughs> oh man, nice pull there. Oh, it is a cobia. Oh, easy on him now. What a great looking animal this is. All right, Chris, I'm gonna see if I can get him up a little bit closer. Every time we get him close, he just kind of makes a run for it. One shake, shake of that head will there you go. Can pop everything loose. Boy, this fish does not seem to tire out, tire out very quickly. I mean, there's a lot of current here, and he's still. There you go. Ease the tension off. Get this rod out of the way. Beautiful fish. It really is. So how big do these fish have to be? We're going to let this one go, but how big do these have to be so that you can keep them? Tony, they've got to be 33 inches to the fork. Right. And the fork of the tail is right here. One of the things we're going to do is we want to get a DNA sample from this fish. So I'm going to cut a little bit of a clip off the anal fin, and we can take this sample to Waddell Mariculture Center, and they can tell us a little bit about where this fish came from. Could be this fish was actually spawned at Waddell Mariculture Center and released into these waters, or it could be it came from somewhere else. Because one of the things we want to do is learn all we can about these fish so that we can protect them for the future. Right, Chris? I mean, That's we right. want to catch these for years to come, don't we? Absolutely. Let's dunk this one back in the water for a second, Tony, and then we'll go over a few more okay. points about that. So let's take a quick look at this fish and a couple things you notice. One is they have a row of spines that are right here that are just absolutely impressive. And you can see they're very much like nails. But Chris, show them the, show them the spines. That's the spines you got to worry about. And I didn't even realize those exist <laughs> until Chris pushed on that. That is unbelievable. I and mean, Tony, they are full metal. I mean, I mean, just solid bone. Feel them. Razor, there's, razor, sure. And there's, you can only go up to 90 degrees and they lock in the place. That's just incredible. Now they're built like a torpedo, aren't they? I mean, they're fast and they're muscular. They are. So these fish come here to spawn, right? That's correct. And uh, our conditions are perfect. There's great food, things like crabs that they need for egg production, uh, and lots of fish. There's gotcha. threadfin herring. Uh, what else? Do? Um, I get a lot of sea robins. They eat a lot of sea robins. Um, this, this animal epitomizes Port Royal Sound to me. I mean, it comes here. This is a very special place. Uh, because it's so deep and because the water is so salty here, it just, this is the animal that epitomizes what Port Royal Sound is all about. Absolutely. Right now we're 12 miles inshore, and that is just unheard of for, for cobia. Okay, well, we don't want to hurt this fish. We want to release it. Absolutely. So let's get it back in and let it go. When you're resuscitating them, you like to, to have them in the water with their face facing into the current. 
and you don't let them go until they start to fight you. So we want to make sure we revive this one, make sure it's ready to go. And... <laughs> it's especially important when you're releasing tarpon as well, Tony, that you resuscitate them to the point where they're actually fighting to get out of your hand. Good. Yeah, we want this fish to do, to do well. Starting the fight a little bit. Oh yeah, she's about ready. I'll drop down. All right, good deal. I'm not sure there's definitely something on it. I'm not sure. Oh, there we go. What do you have there, Tony? I can't tell. <laughs> Man, this feels good, whatever it is. It's about to come over the surface. Yeah. Oh! There you go. This is a nice fish. So it looks like <laughs> this may take a while. These are amazingly strong fish. They pull hard. They, they just are very, very impressive. They're solid muscle. And of course, there's all the current here too, which they use to their advantage. But this is a nice big fish. I think he's coming in a little bit closer, Chris. Well, <laughs> we're not there yet, are we? Oh! Boy, that was a good run. Just dove straight down. Yeah, this is far from over. Just make sure you don't grab that line. Okay. This is a strong <laughs> fish. Oh, man. Yeah. Every time I feel like I'm getting this fish in, it runs about 20 yards of line out. So, I mean, I'm certainly no professional fisherman, but this is a strong fish. Guys, I hate to be kind of a wimp, <laughs> but I'm gonna pass this off to the professional fisherman for a minute. And uh, Chris is gonna see if he can make a little headway on this. This is a big fish, and I'm kind of getting tired. Okay, go. Chris. You can feel on this line, Tony. There she is, right here behind the boat. See her? You can feel the abrasion of the line from having get, been pulled off so many times already. You so, know. Chris, don't make this look too easy. Oh! <laughs> All right, I'm gonna switch with you. And bottom lip. Now close it. Ready? One, One two, two, three. <clears throat> okay, so this is a big, big fish, Chris. So this is a big female. And a female like this. She's 42. And a female, 42 pounds. So this is a big cobia and it's still very, very green. I mean, that was a long fight, but this fish still has a lot of energy. A big female like this can lay a million eggs. She can spawn twice, two million eggs in, in one, one year, year from a fish like this. These fish can reach 15 pounds in a single year, so they, they grow extremely quickly. Uh, the other thing that's really important, Chris, these, these are our fish, right? These are fish that move from offshore to here. That's just correct. East, that's east correct. to west and west to east, and they're not coming north or south or anything like that. There are fish that move in every year. You know, everybody thinks I'm gonna get this fish because of the Florida guys are gonna get it or the Georgia guys are gonna get it or, and it's not true. You know, almost all these fish, their actual migrational pattern is east to west. And the big ones are females, right? A that's... lot, most of the big ones are females. Um, they've got a little bit of a broader head, typically, and a lot more of a swollen abdomen. Uh, we're gonna let this one go anyway. This one could be full of eggs. I'm staying away from those, those spines. But let's go ahead and get this one back in the water. Absolutely. We're gonna make sure we resuscitate her, even though she's totally lively. We wanna make sure that she's 100% or as close as we can get to 100% before we let her go. She looks good, right? <laughs> She's definitely she doing like good. She's coming right back. I'm gonna let her go. You just let her go whenever you're ready. She's on her way. Awesome. Good job, Tony. That was incredible. Wonderful fight. Thank you so much for letting us join you today. Thank you for having me, Tony. I'll tell you what, Port Royal Sound is an amazing fishery, isn't it? It really is. Huge diversity of life.